Welcome to It's Not What You Know! Hello, I'm Joe Lassett. I'm a 29-year-old comedian from Birmingham. Hard to say that without also adding my interests are going out and staying in. Would like to meet similar of either gender. I'm game for anything. <laughs> Now, I often say it's not what you know, but who you know. For example, it can take months of carpentry classes to learn how to make a coffee table, but if you slip Sharon from Ikea a Twix, she'll leave the door to the depot on the latch. <laughs> and it can take a lifetime to master the game of chess, but if you know anyone who'll have sex with you, you probably won't bother. <laughs> This programme is not about what you know, it's about who you know, and most importantly, how well you know them. Every week we get three guests and ask each of them to nominate someone they know, who then gets rung up by me and asked a lot of really important questions. Tonight's panellists have to guess the answers their nominees gave, and if they get enough of them right, they'll win tonight's star prize, a safari trip to Kenya! <laughs> Sorry, I misread that. You'll be on a sofa listening to Enya. <laughs> However, you will still get a full course of injections. But keep up, but who'll be sailing away with that heavily inoculated jackpot? It'll be one of tonight's guests, Russell Kane, Fern Britton and Ivo Graham. First, this week, let's say hello to comedian, presenter and writer Russell Kane. Russell hosted Live at the Electric for BBC Three and recently starred in the show Stupid Man Smart Phone, where he had to survive in the wild with just his phone and a film crew, and a team of producers, plus a stylist. <laughs> Russell, who have you lined up to answer our questions this evening? Well, I go to the pub with this person. I enjoy drinking with them. Her favourite thing is an all-inclusive holiday where you get to wear a band and try and break even by day three with the amount of vodka you've had. <laughs> and I emerged from her torso breach in the 1970s. Ooh. Is it my mum? <laughs> Let's hear who it is. Hi, my name's Julie Greno. I live in Hertfordshire. I'm retired and I'm Russell's mum. Yes, it's your mum, Julie. Oh. What did she do before she retired, Russell? She was an arms dealer, wasn't she? <laughs> in a way, uh, she was a cleaner of factories and houses. As she put it, scrubbing the yew bends of people that are up themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I love her already. Welcome, Russell and Julie. Next, let's say hello to daytime TV presenter, novelist and former Breakfast Time newsreader, Fern Britton. In the 1980s, Fern's face was the one millions of British people woke up to in the morning. She was a trollop. <laughs> Fern, who have you chosen to talk to us? The person I've chosen I've known for 20 years... She is a person who has recently discovered athletic fitness. Until about three or four years ago, she couldn't bear anybody sweating near her or herself sweating. But now she runs down to the gym with alacrity. OK, let's see what they've got to say for themselves. Hi, I'm Grace Jones. I live in Bergen in Norway. I'm a geography student and Fern Britton is my mum. So, Fern, <laughs> your daughter is Grace Jones. I'm familiar with both of your work. And... <laughs> It surprises me, but I can see the resemblance. <laughs> Welcome, Fern and Grace. Finally this evening, let's meet stand-up comedian Ivo Graham. Ivo was educated at Eton, but it's very kind of him to come here this evening and pretend to treat us as equals. <laughs> Ivo, who have you chosen for us to talk to? Um, I've chosen someone I've known for seven and a half years, a, a classic three-quarts-of-a-decade relationship. <laughs> uh, we've had some thrilling highs, uh, some crushing lows, and he sent me some very supportive emails in the summer of 2011. OK, well, let's hear from them now. My name is Ed Cripps. I live in East London. I'm a writer, and Ivo is a very close old university friend, and we now write together. Yes, it's your friend Ed, and you write together. Does he mean that you write together or that you are right together? <laughs> We, uh, we write together, uh, we, 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 we have... I think I know the answer. <laughs> Welcome Ivo and Ed and all of our guests. In round one, we ask your nominees questions about what they think about you, and then you have to try and guess what they might have said. Russell, we'll start with you. We asked your mum, Julie, what is Russell's best personality trait? Oh my what is your mum going to say? <laughs> you worried about this already. Why is that? I'm worried about the whole thing this evening, because when you become a stand-up, right, you change, you disappear off the road, and you sort of isolate yourself. So I'm, I don't know whether my mum is going to remember the me from before I disappeared up my own narcissistic bumhole, or, or whether it's going to be the me now. 
So I'm hoping she'll say funny, but I dread to think what's come out of her mouth. So you're going to go with funny? <laughs> <laughs> OK, you're saying funny. Yes. Let's see what your mum thinks. Oh, God. Confidence, I would say. She says confidence. Does that surprise you that she thought that was your best personality trait? It does, because, again, like most stand-ups, it's a show of confidence mixed with Imodium backstage. <laughs> I haven't had my Imodium, so it um, could be a tricky show, this one. <laughs> Do you know what? I have, because it is a part of being funny, I'm going to give you one point for confidence. Oh, I'm, going to give you, I'm feeling nice today. Fern, here's one for you. We yeah. asked your daughter, the 1980s dance music superstar Grace Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Has your mum ever had an embarrassing fashion faux pas, and what was the worst? Fern, this doesn't sound like you, but what do you think Grace might have said? Yeah. Oh, gosh, there's been plenty. She's been through my wardrobe of 70s clothes, which I kept, you know, fantastic. Bieber, lime green satin bomber jackets and hot pink cerise Justin Bieber. satin loose, eh? What's, what's no, Bieber? No, no, Justin, no, not Justin Bieber. No, <laughs> Justin no. Bieber's your other child. That's my other child. <laughs> Yeah, along with Taylor Swift. And um, <laughs> so Bieber was a fantastic shop in the 70s. So she might say that or she might say <laughs> there's so many things she's laughed at. Um, <laughs> it might I be... I wish Russell's mum could say that. You <laughs> 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 Um, it might be um, a velvet <laughs> evening dress with fur, not real fur, obviously, fur round the wrist and round the neck. And when I said to her, try this on, I was great in this, she said, Mum, I look like Dumbledore. <laughs> so your I'm evening going for dress, the velvet dress with the fur collars and... Cups. The Dumbledore dress, yeah. as we'll call it. Grace, what was Fern's worst fashion moment? She once went to co-op with a teddy bear tail stuck down her leggings. <laughs> Big fan of co-op firm Britain <laughs> with a teddy bear tail stuck down your leggings. Oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> well, it was, we were playing at home and I had a teddy tail on a bit of elastic to wear around my waist and I forgot it was there. <laughs> Oh, and it was dangling out of the back of my um, At least sweatshirt. It was dangling from the back, thank God. For <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a strong look to me. Yes. Grace says that Fern once went to the co-op with a teddy bear tail stuck down her leggings. No one would bat an eyelid at my local co-op. They'd just be grateful someone had come in wearing bottoms. <laughs> No points there. Ivo, let's give you one. Now, you're carving out quite the reputation for yourself as a funny man, but we asked your friend Ed, who is the funniest person Ivo knows? Who is the funniest person you know, and will Ed get it right? The funniest person I know? Yes. OK. This, this... I mean, you've been doing comedy for years now. We started at a similar time. You must know a lot of funny people. We did. We did. <laughs> you must know a couple of really funny people, I would say. <laughs> Um, can I go for the, the pathetic, wheedling Joe Lysett point? Yes, you can. <laughs> oh, I don't believe Let's in Let's ask Ed. Joe Lysett. Yeah! <laughs> After Ivo's met Russell Kane, he can now say that the funniest person he knows is still me, Joe Lysett. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the funniest person I know is Ivo Graham. Thanks, Joe. I'm joking, of course. It's me, Joe Lysett. <laughs> Two points. <laughs> Russell, we've got another one for oh, you. God. We asked your mum, what is the worst job Russell has ever had? What will your mum have chosen for that? I did a fair few. Oh, really? I sold frozen food to the door. That was pretty bad. Whoa. I sold vacuum cleaners to the door. My line was, do you mind if I come in and do some housework while you watch? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I've stuffed mail. I've done credit what? checks. I've done everything. You've stuffed, stuffed mail? I like you. <laughs> like people. People I mean, we've, we've all done that, darling. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to go the door-to-door -door vacuum clean salesman. OK, Julie, what was Russell's worst job? Selling vacuum cleaners. Yes, <laughs> yes uh, Julie says that Russell's worst job was selling vacuum cleaners. Russell went on to present shows on BBC Three, so going from one vacuum to another. <laughs> Sorry, but Come on, funny. Joe, we've all sucked from that teat. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so two points for Russell there. Well Fern, done. we're back with you. We yes. asked Grace, what would be Fern's party trick? What is Grace going to have said? <laughs> oh, my, per 
It might be saying words backwards quickly. Oh, do it. Will it any word? Don't do it. Well, just so say, something, just something give harder. me a word and I'll <laughs> try it. Joe Lysett. <laughs> Joe Lysett, tickle yodge. Oh. Goodness me. <laughs> Show us over, folks. This is what we're doing now. <laughs> Sausages. Uh, Seguyuas. <laughs> I mean, shout them out if you want to. I mean, I <laughs> used to keep my children amused when they were little in the car, and they'd say, "Oh, what? do car park," and it's crap rack. So they loved it. <laughs> so you think it's saying? I, I'm going to say it's saying things backwards. Yeah. Just remind me not to go to any parties be. with you. <laughs> Grace, tell us what would be Fern's party trick. She can do the split. <gasps> She can do the splits. You can do the splits. Yes, I can do them, but can you please just assume that I can? You could win, you could win money in a No, pub. someone just went... <laughs> <laughs> Literally no-one wanted to hear you do yeah. words backwards. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Everyone wants a split. Yes, the slips. Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, no points there. Ivo, let's give you another go. We asked Ed, does Ivo have any hidden talents? Oh. What do you think Ed might have said? I can say words in the right order. <laughs> uh, I don't have any hidden talents. Um, I, I can juggle a bit. Uh, El gotcha a tip. <laughs> can I just say, Joe, um, the ideal scenario for me is... Fern's answer about the backwards words not being left in, but all Fern's interjections with backwards versions of words <laughs> staying in. <laughs> Fern losing her mind <laughs> while we try to think of our talents. <laughs> I can juggle a bit uh, and I can speak Russian because I studied at a university. Uh, oh, that's good. Okay. Kiaps um, Nussier. Would you like me to reset, Fern? I can see the buttons. No, I... <laughs> <laughs> that's control or delete. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I'd probably go for speaking Russian. OK, let's ask Ed. Ivo speaks fluent Russian. <gasps> yes! Yes, Ed said that Ivo's hidden talent is that he speaks fluent Russian. I'd like to go to Russia, where, as an openly bisexual man, I'm sure they'd treat me to a comprehensive tour of their very best prisons. <laughs> So that's two points, and it's the end of round one. And in third place is Fern, in second place is Russell, and in the lead right now, it's Ivo! Hey. In round one, we found out what the nominees know about the panellists. In round two, we see just how well the panellists know their nominees. Russell, let's see how well you know the woman from whom you once emerged. We asked Julie, Julie, what country would you most like to visit? Russell, where do you think your mum will have gone for? Kenya. Kenya, why'd yep. you say that? She's been banging on about it for years. <laughs> and uh, she's finally booked it as well. So all we're hearing about the whole time is Mombasa, Mombasa, this time, the whole time. So I think she would have said Kenya. Oh, well, that's um, very confident. Let's see what Julie says. I'd like to go to New Zealand. <laughs> New, why do I, was New Zealand even... I've never heard her talk about it. <laughs> never. Never. It's bloody Mombasa every two minutes. <laughs> no points. Definitely no points there. Fern, how well do you know the woman who, in order to get good service at John Lewis, loudly claims to be your daughter? We asked Grace. Grace, when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? When Grace was little, she decided she was going to be a gypsy, but only in the summer, <clears throat> uh, because it'd be too cold in the winter. But if she wanted to be a gypsy, definitely. Yes. OK. <laughs> Do you want to have another stab at that? <laughs> she loved the idea of being in a beautiful caravan with horses and boiling kettles over little log fires. Well, I, think, I think she said barrister is what Bar she said, barrister. <laughs> well, Let's just try something else. She really wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I'm going to go with... No, she that's not comedy. right either. No? We travel around the country I in know, our caravan. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Eating up our dinner on wood fire. Oh, <laughs> gosh, if you okay. can't say gypsy, blimey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep pushing. What about, what let's about keep the going. musical? What about the musical? That's, it's yeah. called Gypsy. Yes. Eh? Mm. I didn't see that taken off the West End It's stage. actually about stand-up no. comedians, it don't <laughs> <laughs> Can I keep going? I mean, it's not gypsy, so I mean... It's not gypsy. Well, I'm still going with it. OK. She did. Do you want her to be a gypsy? <laughs> I mean, she's 
She has ended up travelling to Norway. <laughs> She wants to be a troll now. She wants to be a troll now. Yeah, yeah. That, an, an I think troll. you'll get a few trolls after this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's find out. Okay. Grace, tell us what you wanted to be. Well, I wanted to be an Olympic swimmer. <laughs> she wanted to be an Olympic swimmer. What, what happened, Grace? What went wrong? <laughs> Mum used to forget to take me to practice, so I had to quit. You will be a gypsy. You will not swim. <laughs> Now, go feed your horse and stop complaining. <laughs> Is this, do, you, do you remember any of this? Well, <laughs> yes, I do. I, I do now, but... <laughs> she, um... When you said little, I thought you meant when she was really little because she got very excited about the gypsies coming. <laughs> but anyway, when she... Yes, when she got to sort of 12, 13, she had some She sort lost of... her passion for she... gypsies. <laughs> To all of she had something to do with swimming, I don't know, and I just, it was Sunday mornings and I wanted to listen to the archers and so... <laughs> no points, no careers after that. <laughs> Ivo, let's see how well you know your friend Ed. We asked him, Ed, what is your most treasured possession? What is Ed going to have said? Um, I think it's probably a set of books called A Dance to the Music of Time. A Dance to the Music of Time. Well, let's find out from Ed. The painting my sister did for me of three cows, which I just love so much. I think it's my favourite painting in the world. There are four, actually. Four cows. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know about this painting? Yes, but, but the books are <laughs> lovely books. Yes, there is a painting of cows that is Ed's most treasured possession, but Ed can't remember if there are three or four cows in it. I love a cow painting. You know it's good when the others follow you around the room. <laughs> no points there. Russell, this one's yours. We asked your mum, Julie, who would you most like to be stranded on a desert island with? Who do you think she might have said? Kenya. <laughs> Mm. Is there anyone like that she really idolised? Any ever like heroes? Well, it could. She's either gone down the family route, or she's gone for some sort of Hollywood star. I'm trying yeah. to think who she always said she. She used to fancy Sylvester Stallone mm. a lot. He's gone a bit Picasso in recent years, hasn't he? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll go for Sylvester Stallone still. That was who her heartthrob was when I was growing up. Really. So. Okay, let's ask Julie. Mm -hmm. Probably someone like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah! That is the best how feeling. much you're into this, how much you're thrilled to get these things right. I just think when it's a, it's a child, mother, there's so much at stake if you don't know each other. It's horrible. <laughs> I mean, Fern doesn't know Grace <laughs> at all. <laughs> Julie would like to be stranded on a desert island with someone like Sylvester Stallone. I'd like to be stuck on a desert island with Eamon Holmes, just to give everyone else a break. <laughs> Two points there. We're coming back to you, Fern. Oh, we good. asked your daughter and star of A View to a Kill, Grace Jones. <laughs> Grace, if you were a superhero, what superhero would you be? What do you think Grace will have chosen? Oh, I know who she'd want to be. Boob woman. Yeah, because... <laughs> Let's keep it clean. No, this is clean. This is clean. So imagine, imagine Superman mm -hmm. is fighting the Penguin and Batman comes in and they're all in a big tussle. Boob Woman arrives, lifts her top. All the baddies go, oh. And while they look away, Superman finishes them. <laughs> so it's all because of Su Boob Woman. Superman Boob pounds the baddies while everyone looks at boobs. <laughs> OK, you're going with Boob Woman. OK, Grace, <laughs> what superhero would you be? I would be Boob Woman. <laughs> yes, if Grace was a superhero, she would be Boob Woman. Good old Boob Woman. And, of course, there's her arch-nemesis, Gravity Man. <laughs> So two points there. Hooray. Ivo, you're up now. We asked Ed. Ed, what crime would you most like to commit if you knew you wouldn't get caught? What is Ed going to have said? Um, maybe some sort of online snooping. Uh, is this uh, the Russian thing again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've said too much. Guinea noops. I'm so pleased we're back on backwards words. <laughs> um, I'll say uh, money laundering. Money laundering. Let's see what Ed went for. Fly tipping. Fly <laughs> tipping. 
now you mention it, the amount of times I caught him on, on the balcony with our sofa. <laughs> no, no, no it. Put it down. He's never mentioned a, a taste for fly tipping, but I, I wish him all the best with it, obviously. <laughs> no points there. And that's the end of round two. And in third place is Fern, in second place is Ivo, and out in the front at the moment is Russell. <laughs> And it's time for round three. I'll read out the answer to a question, and what you have to do is tell me which of our three nominees gave that answer. Was it Russell Kane's mum, Julie, Fern Britton's daughter, Grace, or Ivo Graham's friend, Ed? Now, I don't want to trigger any panic attacks, but things are about to get even more thrilling, because we're going to bring in some buzzers. However, if you buzz in and you're wrong, a point will be deducted from your overall score. But, as they say at Eton, it doesn't matter if everything goes tits up, because the whole system is built to support you. (laughs) So, fingers on buzzers, which of tonight's nominees, Julie, Grace or Ed, said that their least favourite food is pickled walnuts? Russell. It's my mum. Yeah, pickled walnuts. You think it's your mum, Julie? Let's find out. Pickled walnuts. It's Julie's. Yes, it's Russell's mum who hates pickled walnuts. I've actually never tried them, but then I'm allergic to foods that you can only eat if you have no (laughs) self-respect. Let's throw another one out there. Which of our three nominees, Julie, Grace or Ed, when asked if they had ever been in trouble with the law, replied, I was once stopped by customs in Latvia for smuggling bullets? Fern. Grace. OK, let's find out who that was. I was stopped at a Latvian airport for having a bullet casing in my luggage. It's Grace Jones, yes. It's an unexpected story. Can you explain how this yes, happened, Fern? Yes, it is an unexpected story. She rang me early one morning and I said, hello, thinking, oh, this doesn't sound good. She said, hello, Mum. I said, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I am, ha, ha, I'm at Latvia Airport. Yes. And you know I said I was going to the uh, abandoned Russian village? No. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, we did. And um, there were some spent bullets on the floor and so we all picked one up and put them in our pockets then I've just come through the security and the thing went off and I had one in my pocket and they've taken my passport and then she said it means I'm going to be checked now wherever I go and I won't be allowed back into the UK I said no, I think you'll be fine just be sure she's now in Norway yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst bit this... of the whole ordeal was when she flashed the security cards and, <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't work no. Yes, it was Grace who was once stopped by Latvian customs for smuggling bullets. What this story shows us is that you can't even smuggle bullets out of Latvia anymore. Bloody Brexit. (laughs) (laughs) Two points to Fern. Let's try another. Which of our nominees, Julie, Grace or Ed, said that their all-time hero is Mrs Thatcher? Who's that? Ivo. Uh, Russell's mother, Julie. Please, no. Please, God, no. (laughs) Please, God, no. no. You think she's a Thatcher fan? Uh, I think it would be a hell of a twist that we'd all enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we bought our own council house. If that, maybe it's that. It can't be her. Let's see who it is. Probably Margaret Thatcher. It's Julie. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher's a bit before my time. I'm most familiar with her as the bad guy in Billy Elliot. <laughs> So that's two points to Ivo, and it's the end of round three, and in second place is Russell, but now in joint first is Fern and Ivo. So you're probably wondering how we can follow round three, and the answer, (laughs) numerically, is with round four. We call this round... One Massive Question. In one massive question, we ask only one question. What kind of question? A massive one. It's a question that cuts to the very heart of your nominee's character, showing us once and for all how well you really know them. As Fern used to say to the guests backstage on this morning, strap in, because not everyone's getting out of this alive. (laughs) Because it's a massive question, it's worth a massive four points. Tonight, the one massive question is this. What is your nominee's favourite pudding? (laughs) You may well gasp. (laughs) It says here. (laughs) We have given your nominees the opportunity to pick their dream dessert. (sighs) We haven't restricted them in any way other than to insist they pick something that was actually a pudding. So that rules out things like a cheese board, packet of licorice, all sorts, or just more gin. (laughs) Russell Kane, we want oh. you to go deep and merge your consciousness with that of your mum, Julie. 
Her sweet tooth is your sweet tooth. Her taste buds are your taste buds. Use your personal first-hand knowledge of your mum and tell us what do you think would be her favourite pudding? Oh, be ironic if it's something milk-based, given her Thatcher-loving. <laughs> The only thing I can think of is creme brulee from Papillon's French restaurant. Ooh. So going with creme brulee. Julie, what is your favourite pudding? Probably sticky toffee. <laughs> yeah, she went with sticky toffee I I had that. pudding. I, I prefer had that. non-sticky toffee pudding, which is a yoghurt filled with Werther's Originals. <laughs> no points there, Russell. Ivo Graham. As the lion thinks its way into the mind of the gazelle, so you must think your way into the mind of your friend, Ed. When you have Ed over to yours for a light supper, what does your valet bring out between the wood pigeon (laughs) and the cigars and brandy? What is Ed's favourite pudding? I think it's going to be a a chocolate brownie. Uh, Yeah, with with the old with ice cream dilemma. say no, no ice cream, just a chocolate brownie. Chocolate brownie, no ice cream. Ed, choose your pudding. Banoffee pie. Oh! Banoffee pie! That's what he's gone for, banoffee pie. Also, my favourite sex position. (laughs) No, I'm joking, it's rhubarb crumble. (laughs) No points. Fern Britton. The lasting happiness of your family could depend on how well you can vaguely remember what your daughter Grace likes to eat for her pudding. (laughs) We know she could have been an Olympic swimmer, and she seems to like getting the girls out. But what does she like to (laughs) have for dessert? Fern, ready, steady, guess that pudding. She loves stewed apples, and so I'm going to go for apple crumble. Apple crumble? Yeah. Grace, give us the answer so we can all go home. I'm eating that. What? Of course it's Eaton Mess. Ask me that again. <laughs> yes, Eaton Mess. And uh-huh. if you're wondering how to make that, it's a mix of strawberries, meringue, heavy cream and white privilege. <laughs> no points there. And that's the end of this week's It's Not What You Know. So let's see the final scores. In second place is Russell. And joint winners of the show and sharing an Enya CD and a note for the nurse, it's Ivo and Fern. <laughs> That's it. Thank you to all of our panellists, Russell Kane and his mum Julie, Fern Britton and her daughter Grace, and Ivo Graham and his friend Ed. And until next time, just remember, it's not what you know. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's Not What You Know was hosted by me, Joe Lysett. Some of the things I said were written by me and James Keppel with additional material by Aidan Butler. The show was produced by Matt Strong and it was a BBC Studios production. 